Hi, Keith here with another statistical video. In this one I'm going to look at analysis of variance and particularly the assumptions. The two that most people are aware of are that the data should come from populations which have a normal distribution and which have equal variance. Now of course most people know that some departures from these assumptions are acceptable and moderate variations from them won't seriously affect the analysis of variance. I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so here in PAST I have some randomly generated data for a two-factor design. So I've got factor A with two levels and factor B with three levels and two replicates for each combination and here I've got a column of data which are not normally distributed they are log normally distributed and that's because I generated them here in Minitab using the calc random data and log normal functions so there and those data are going to have a distribution that looks something like that it's decidedly skewed to the left is certainly not normal and because of the parameters I use the two or the different groups in here will have different variances so let's look at running an ANOVA first we'll do it here in Minitab we can use the balanced option and I'm using log norm as the response factor A factor B and the line in the middle there indicates that the full model should be used. Okay, and we get these results here. None of the factors is significant, even though I did actually build in a difference between factor A and factor B. There's only a small number of observations and only two replicates, so it doesn't actually show up. Now I've copied these onto a PowerPoint to look at a little bit later and compare with PAST. So here in PAST we want to do the same thing, we'll select the block of data up to statistics and then down to two-way ANOVA. And we get very similar sorts of results and if you remember the figures these are coming out the same as you would hope and expect. Now I've also copied those onto PowerPoint to look at in a little while. Now there is one other way to do that analysis here in PAST and that is use the multivariate option. Now before I go there you'll note I don't have a multivariate data set here I've got just one variable selected and I go down here to two-way non-parametric manover select that option. Now at first the numbers in here don't seem to be similar to the ones before. But if I go up here and click, click Euclidean, you'll see those are starting to look similar. Now, the way in which PAST tests hypotheses in several of its routines is by permutation. And you can see up the top here, I can select the number of permutations and if I click you'll see it just runs or I hit enter it runs and generates a new set and the numbers change down here the p-values in the last decimal place. So it also copied this into PowerPoint. So let's go and have a look. Top results are the analysis from Minitab. The second screenshot there is the analysis from what a two-way ANOVA in PAST and the last one is two-way non-parametric MANOVA. And if you look, sums of squares 19.88, 19.89, 19.888 19 and all of the numbers in the tables with the exception of the p-values are the same for two decimal places. Now we would certainly expect that to be the case up here for the top two graphics and indeed the p-values there are also identical 
that should be the case because both Minitab and PAST for their ANOVA routines are getting the p-values from the F distribution. But down here for the non-parametric MANOVA the p-values are being generated by permutation. And you will note that they are virtually identical. There's really no substantial difference between 0.327 and 0.326 and 0 0.50, 0 0.49 and 0.23 and 0.23. Now, it's important to note that if you're using this option, you do need to select Euclidean distance as the distance measure because that guarantees that you'll get the same result as you would get doing the ANOVA using a standard package. Now what does this tell us? Remember that the distributions of these data were decidedly non-normal. They were log normal. And I also made the variance of, of level 1 of factor A and level 2 of factor A, I made those variances different. But the p-values coming from the permutational test are virtually identical to the p-values coming from the standard test. That's another way of saying that the standard analysis of variance really is quite robust. Even though the distributions were definitely not normal, deliberately so, I get p-values the same as I get from permutation. The permutation method can be used for a two-factor design or a one-factor design in past to do an analysis of variance, an ordinary analysis of variance, if you are unsure about the assumptions of normality and equality of variance. The permutation test is making some assumptions, but they're much broader and much less strict than the ones made by ANOVA. Now in PAST you can only do one and two way ANOVAs by permutation. If you want to do use that method for a more complicated analysis you will need to use another tool such as Primer with the PermAnova add-in or um, a package like R. Hope that's of some interest.